So run me through, as a production designer, run me through your process on what that looks like when you first sign on to do a movie or a TV show. Um, what kind of people are you meeting with? What do those meetings look like? Like run me through those conversations. Yeah, you know, I think always initially, or at least for me, always initially, I'm sent a script um, or, and if there's not a script, at least some kind of breakdown of what the project's going to be about. Um, or if it's a TV show, you know, just like a general outline of what the season's going to be. Um, so I take a look at that and then I will often put together some first uh, impression images just to go into a meeting with, you, even if they're not on the same page as the director, at least it gives us like a visual to talk about, like, we don't want that or we do want that. Okay. Um, and so I'll usually have that and I'll meet with the director um, or the showrunner and we'll take a look and kind of talk about how like they like to work, how I like, I like to work and just see if we like connect on that level um, and then kind of take the steps from there and uh, we start to get more detailed uh, off of those base images and off of that first conversation, we'll start to like dive into the sets from there, so. That makes sense. And then do you have something that you put in every project that you work on that's kind of personal to you or just kind of a, a little like Easter egg for yourself that you always like to include? Sometimes I don't, uh, I try not to get too hung up on, <laughs> you know, including like that one banana lamp that like <laughs> won't necessarily make sense. Um, I have my friend Sydney drew these really cute cats that I love. They're like kind of falling and they're cute. And I've included those in a lot of movies, actually. Um, I don't think they made it into bros this time, but yeah, I try to. That stuff's That's fun. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, that would be me, like fitting stuff, fitting personal little little things in. Totally. At, during the Comic-Con panel, you mentioned how um, certain things, we don't necessarily get to see them on screen as viewers, but the actors know that they're there. So do you kind of take the actors through a scene before the director calls action so that they know, like, you know, this is here if you need to rely on it? Like, how does that whole process work? Yeah, I'll usually, so usually when I'm opening a set in the morning, the actors aren't quite there yet because they're kind of starting their whole process of getting ready. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll walk through it with the director and the assistant director and kind of make sure they know what's around and what's available like hey look we filled every drawer in this dresser so i know he's packing in this scene like he can go through every drawer it's totally fine um to give them a heads up because they'll be the ones ultimately playing playing through the scene um right. and having fun with that yeah okay yeah I, I love this like behind the scenes look at stuff because you think like you just think of about an actor going into a scene and just doing the thing but there's so many steps that have to happen beforehand whether it's the actual scene that they're in to the props that they're using to the clothes that they're wearing so you mentioned um a project that you worked on that you ha you had to include a live laugh love poster in I and i i am dying to know what that, <laughs> what that I is can't. now no, i'm just no, gonna be no. looking I out mean, for live laugh love posters <laughs> no it's a it's a funny anecdote and um i actually i loved working on that show and i loved all the people i'm not gonna say what show it is and eventually sure. Well, um, we can, yeah of course we built we built up on that but it's like you know I, I was going for the laugh at the panel so <laughs> well you got it you definitely got it and I was like ferociously writing it down I'm like I need to ask about this <laughs> um, now specifically back to bros for a second were there any particular challenges that you ran into creating the sets for the movie yeah, you know, I think we just had a really big scope. We had so many cool sets to design. And, um, you know, with anything, it's like we, we had time, we had the, the backing to do it and all of that. But it's like you still feel crunched because I feel like often on projects, there are one or two sets that are really cool. And like, I'll give everything my attention, but I'm like, those are my babies. And on this, I was like, that's my baby. That's my baby. That's my, they're all my babies. So. <laughs> um you know just kind of feeling spread out in that way and like really just caring about many different elements of many different sets so that was like a, a mental exercise but an enjoyable one ultimately yeah. it's a good problem to have so yeah for sure I definitely think um probably one of the most talked about ones was like the gala at the end at the museum but I also appreciated the um the Hallheart village setup 
I thought that was really, really well done, really well executed. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I called my decorator, Nikki, who always we always work together. And I was like, you'll be happy. There's a Christmas village. <laughs> You're going to love it. <laughs> yeah, she's been bugging me to do a Christmas movie forever. So I was like, it's not a Christmas movie for fall, but you'll get a little Christmas. You can still check that box. That's okay. Yeah. Was there, and you might have mentioned this at the panel, but refresh my memory. Was there anything that you hid in bros that's kind of that little personal touch of yours? Anything that I hid in particularly? I mean, I think that, you know, Billy and uh, members of my team, my PA Grace, um, we really made a like crazy, crazy book list. I can't remember if I talked about this at the panel. We literally made, I was looking at it before, we made like a six page book list. Of, oh, wow, of just books. You know, oh, just books. And we wow. literally bought all of them. And there, those are all the books in his apartment and, and in his podcasting studio. Okay. Um, and so that's not like, I mean, I'm queer, so I guess it is like a personal detail that we wanted to make sure that this person who is very in tune with queer culture and pop culture and um, a historian in, a, in his own way as well, we wanted to make sure that those books were accurate and represented the kind of books that character would be reading. Um, so, you know, like I said, that's probably not a deep... You might see it in a couple of scenes. I feel like I've watched the movie enough now where I'm like, oh, it's in the Nias Lynn book back there. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was important for me to know that those... We weren't just, like, including, like, whatever, you just know, books I got off the street. Bookshelf. Yeah, I, I got you. I got you. What was the one thing that you enjoyed most about working on this project? If you could pick just one. Um, I think, you know the importance of it uh is huge i think that as a queer person getting to be part of telling that story and getting to be part of the first um you know major studio released film was huge for me and, and that that will always be a really special memory and also the people involved were incredible you know um nick stoller the director is like amazing he's awesome he's so talented he's so sweet billy is obviously incredible um you know the dp all of the apato producers are lovely it was just like a really excellent experience and we got to really play and really have fun and really dig into research so i can't pick just one thing but That's yeah fair. i figured that would be the answer <laughs> um and then finally i just wanted to touch on it bros was met with a little bit of backlash from some audiences it was pulled from some theaters some, in places in the united states hmm. and i just wanted to know your reaction to that if you had heard about that and what you thought what you thought about it when you did hear you know, I actually, I hadn't heard that. It doesn't totally surprise me. Um, yeah. You know, it's, I try not to get too caught up in all of the like immediate responses, because of course, this is going to stimulate some reactions of all sure. different types of people. You know, I would say, what I would say to that is like, I think maybe people are, we can focus on those, but for myself, you know, I had situations with, with people that my, were my parents' age that were excited to go see the film. And I try to be like, give a little bit of disclaimer, like, it's kind of raunchy, you know, yeah. so, you know, and they would totally text me after being like, oh, you, I, you don't think I'm so square. I loved it. And like, you know, I know a lot about gay men dating now, but <laughs> you know. I've learned so, a lot. <laughs> yeah. So I was surprised in that way on a personal level in, in the feedback that I heard. So I'll focus on that instead. 